Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Sami here. Today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto was son of the Demon King, part 2. Hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. Naruto and Kamimuro followed Inari to the clothing shop Tsunami mentioned to find that the place had everything they needed. Apparently a former merchant from Water Country had somehow managed to get out of the chaotic and unstable place to set up shop in a now stable wave country. They had everything from clothes, to weapons, and even low-level water jutsus, with instructions on how to combine their power with certain weapons, to make them much more lethal. The day young masters, how may I be of service to you? Said the store owner, bowing his head towards the three boys. My brother and his friend here need fresh clothing since they just went through hell, and back, said Inari smiling at the man, and the fact he could finally curse without his mom around to scold him like she did her old man. Of course, may I suggest some weapons perhaps? said the store owner, seeing that the two older boys were clearly shinobi from their stances. Kunai, and shuriken for us, but nothing more than that, said Naruto, knowing that his father's den had more than his fair share of weapons. Very good young masters, very good. Now if you come with me I'll simply get your measurements, and get you the clothing you desire, said the store owner leading the two farther back, while Inari stayed to secretly stand guard. In Kanoha Hokage Tower, you want to send another team after him, Sanadi sama said Shizun looking at her teacher with shock, knowing that not just anyone could be sent to retrieve Naruto. I have no choice, Shizun. The council wasn't exactly pleased with Jiraiya's failure to kill, much less return Naruto for them to kill themselves. Those old cranes demanded that I send another team regardless of them being overpowered or not. Since they overruled me I have no choice, but fortunately for me, I intend to choose which team is suitable for the task, said Sanadi, though she wished that the council would just simply leave the boy alone. Who are you going to send? said Shizun, knowing that her teacher must have a plan of some sort, should the team successfully return Naruto. Shino for one, despite being out on a mission with his father, could help in this situation in helping Naruto see some way in coming home without force. Hinata is another choice, she has a crush on the boy, which I hope that with her kind nature and presence would stem the hate in his heart. I was thinking of sending Sakura, but after I found out about her hostility towards Naruto when he got back from the mission I'm moving against that. I'll also send Guy and Enko as their squad leaders, knowing that if the situation gets out of hand, those two can hopefully at least stall Naruto long enough for the others to possibly get away from his wrath, said Sanadi knowing that the last thing she needed right now was a slaughter of several future clan heads. I'll get them right away Tsunadi-sama, said Shizun, heading out to retrieve them. I just hope this doesn't backfire on me, said Sanadi, wishing the council would get off her back about Naruto, since they were the reason he was like this in the first place. Wave country several hours later. So how do you like your new clothes young masters? Said the store owner, seeing that Kamimura was wearing black combat boots, black baggy angu pants, a blood red shirt with the kanji symbol for sin of mankind on the back, and a mask covering the lower half of his mouth with the mask showing fang teeth. They are quite good. Thank you Kamara-san, said Naruto. He now wore an old style shinobi black bodysuit with the kanji symbol for death's master on the back in blood red. The honor is all mine Naruto-sama. As for the price on these, I give them to you in the house to show my appreciation for a hero like yourself. You brought life and hope to this once dying place, so it's only fitting that I show you how much that means to me. After Water Country started to fall apart I was beginning to believe the world was going to fall into a form of dark age. After seeing life in this place I'm happy to know that I was wrong, said Kumar, as he had been told all about Naruto when he first set up shop in Wave. Naruto-sama will soon accomplish many things in the years to come Kamara-san that I can assure you, said Kamimuro, as the two walked out with Inari seeing, and giving them two thumbs up, saying they looked like they were ready to kick some ass. Kanoha Hokage Tower, Sakura, and Kakashi sat before the Hokage in her office, both squirming slightly under the hawk-like gaze of the busty woman, who was not exactly pleased with either of them at the moment. Tsunade had read reports on the favoritism Kakashi showed Sasuke, and the verbal abuse Sakura gave Naruto right after the failed mission to retrieve the Ichiha. It was also clear that the two knew why they were now sitting in her office, since they both looked guilty. I don't suppose either of you have anything to say to me in your defense in regards to your actions towards Naruto, said Tsunade looking at the two. Okage-sama, I know I didn't spend as much time as I should have with Naruto or even Sakura here in terms of training like I did Sasuke. However, Ichiha Sasuke is clearly the most talented of the three since he beat Naruto at the Valley of the End, despite the aid of the Curse Seal, said Kakashi, hoping it would help justify his reason in favoring Sasuke. I know I yelled at Naruto earlier at the hospital, but the Baka deserved it. He promised he would bring Sasuke Kun back to me, and he failed to keep it, said Sakura, knowing she had her own reason for doing it, and after her parents praised her for it, she had felt quite pleased with herself. That is of course, until Tsunade summoned Sakura to her office for a little talk, as the female leader of the village put it. So you two feel your feelings toward Naruto are justified, all because Sasuke is an Ichiha, and a broken promise that nearly killed Naruto after the fight. Tell me Kakashi, after examining Naruto's wounds, can you tell me what move was used to nearly kill your students? 
Tell me soccer, who beat Subaku no guard during the invasion that saved your miserable life, said Sanadi, her voice becoming dark now, and her eyes narrowed even further. My original jutsu, the Chidori I taught Sasuke in order to fight Gar for his match at the Chunin exams, said Kakashi, knowing that the boy would need it to fight difficult opponents. Sasuke Khan save me. I know he told me it was Naruto, but that's just Sasuke Khan being modest and caring, said Sakura in her fangirl-like state, not seeing the furious look now held in Sanadi's eyes. You both disgust me. Kakashi you teach Sasuke your prized Chidori thinking it would defeat Gar, but you taught Naruto nothing knowing he was facing the Hyuga prodigy of the Hyuga branch clan. Also what would have happened if Sasuke had lost to Gaara had Orochimaru not interrupted it. If it wasn't for my old teammate teaching Naruto at the time, then your moronic choice of a substitute, then Naruto would have lost. Said Sanadi scowling further at the man before her, knowing he shouldn't have taught the Chidori to Sasuke, no matter what the man said. That Baka would have lost anyway. He just got lucky, said Sakura, not caring anymore about how she should talk to Naruto since he was no longer in the village. He did far better than you to get to the finals of Runo, so don't think you are all high and mighty in comparison to him. Also in case you need another reality check, Naruto was the one that defeated Gar, not Sasuke, and I have all the reports from the Suna siblings to prove it. Had it not been for Naruto's intervention to save you Sakura, Gar's power over the sand that held you at his mercy, would have crushed you like an insect, said an angry Tsunade, who saw Sakura scowling slightly, as she looked away not believing that it was Naruto that saved her, and not Sasuke. I take it that's not the only reason you called us here, is it? Said Kakashi knowing that when the Hokage decides to punish you it's quite a punishment. What was your first guess? Starting right now Kakashi, you are hereby demoted back to Chunin, and to learn what it means to be a team player. You are also forbidden to go to the Memorial Stone until I see that you will no longer become lazy because of it. As for you Sakura, I'm sending you back to the academy to relearn everything from certain female instructors I'm placing there that I'm hoping will beat the living hell out of the fangirl residing in you. Whether they do this literally or figuratively to you during your training is their choice. If you don't like it, then stop being a leaf shinobi altogether, said Sanadi, seeing the shock looks on both their faces. With that argument over, Sanadi went back to the mountainous pile of paperwork that now stood before her. How she hated this job. Elsewhere in Kanoha, Yurei sighed, as he stared at Kanoha from his spot, seeing how people were having little celebrated events concerning Naruto, not caring that the boy had kept them safe for the past 12 plus years. The boy had been hated by so many, and loved by too few in his life growing up in the village that thought of him as a demon. Given the alternative being executed, I guess the idea of being the son of Kayubi is not as bad as it sounds. Hell I would probably follow through with it if I was constantly treated like crap for most, though my whole beginning years of life thought Jureyu was ashamed that he himself couldn't protect Naruto all those years that forced the boy to abandon his life as a human being, and actually became Kayubi's son. When he told the Hokage she wasn't exactly thrilled. Flashback, what do you mean Naruto has declared himself the son of Kayubi? said Tsunade now looking pissed off like the day she caught Jiraiya peeping on her, and beat him within an inch of his life. I'm afraid it's the truth Tsunade. Whatever happened to Naruto came directly from Kayubi himself. I don't know if the demon manipulated him into it, or if the kids simply let it happen out of a moment of weakness for what was going to happen to him here in Kanoha on account of his soon-to-be execution. However, I can say this, from what I felt from Naruto, he is no longer human anymore Tsunade, and may have even transformed himself into a full-fledged demon fox, said Jiraiya before he let out a sigh, knowing this would not go over well in the village when people found out about this. Damn it. If the council finds out about this then they have more support from the public in wanting Naruto dead. What better way to exact revenge on Kayubi than killing his proclaimed son, said Tsunade, sighing at that fact not liking it one bit. It's not just Tsunade. When I looked into Naruto's eyes, I saw none of the happiness they used to hold, but rather a near limitless amount of rage swirling within them. He was so angry at me, at us, and basically everyone else here in Kanoha for making his life so damn miserable. He wants nothing to do with Tsunade, whether we're his friend or not, and I think the best thing to do is leave him alone to be himself. Naruto won't return to finish what Kayubi started that I'm sure of, but if we confront and provoke him, that just may be a different story, said Jiraiya, noticing the heartbreaking look Tsunade now had on her face. How can you say that Jiraiya? I wouldn't rest until he's brought back to Kanoha, screws the council, and their united vote to give the execution order. I will do everything that is in my power, and beyond to ensure Naruto's safety in this village when he is brought back, said Tsunade, not wanting to lose the boy she had become so fond of, and had breathed new life into her body. You say that now Tsunade, but the real question is can you actually back up your claim if you succeed? Said Jiraiya before leaping out the window. Then flashback, Yuraya sighed again, remembering how the urge to do some research at the hot springs seemed to die in him, now that Naruto was gone. The kid had so much potential to be his successor to his book on account of the sexy jutsu, which would have allowed Naruto to actually go into the women's side of the hot springs and not get beat up. I mean it was brilliant if not genius. 
Aside from that though the kid was the closest thing Jiraiya had left of his previous and deceased student that was the Yandang. Now that Naruto was gone by renouncing his life as a human being and replacing it with demons, Jiraiya felt as if part of him died as well. He wanted his new student to be as strong and hopefully just as perverted as he was when Naruto got older. But this whole thing with the council ordering his execution had shot it all to hell. I wonder what Kami's judgment of me will be when I die. Will he be merciful or is Kami really a woman and hates perverts? Please be the former thought Jiraiya, though deep down he knew that it was probably the latter, and he was most likely screwed. Wave country. So this is wave country huh? Looks much better than what I had heard when that pig of a man Gato ruled over this place, said Anko, having used her snakes to pick up Naruto's trail to wave country. It seems logical that Naruto would come here considering it is the closest place in his heart to a second home when away from Konoha, said Shino's bugs telling him that there was a second chakra signature with Naruto's, though it was masked by the demonic presence of their comrade. Do you really think that Naruto-kun will come back with us if we ask him to? Said Hinata wondering what her crush looked like now that they had all been informed by Tsunade of his changes. Yash. I believe Naruto's flames of youth while changed still burn brightly, and should not be counted out in rejoining the leaf once more, said Gaai giving the girl a shiny smile with a thumbs up. Yeah if the council and villagers don't kill him first, said Anko, though it was more to herself than the others. As the group made their way to the bridge they saw the plaque on the side making them stop in shock and surprise when they're at it. Now crossing the Great Uzumaki Naruto Bridge. Named in honor of the very hero that inspired us to believe that heroes really do exist. Naruto-kun has a bridge of this magnitude named after him, and is considered a true hero in their eyes thought Hinata, in awe of her crush being seen by others, as a hero too. We'll all be dipped in chocolate naked. This bridge is huge, and it's named after the little run for being heroic, said Anko shaking her while smirking, while Shino tried to hide his blush at the special Janin's words. Let us enter, and see if we cannot find our lost comrade, said Guy before rushing across the bridge to find Naruto with the others in tow. Tsubuza's, and Haku's graves, are these the ones Naruto-sama? said Kamimuro to Naruto with Inari not far behind to be their lookout, since this was a very delicate procedure they were doing. The eight-year-old kid had been told what they were going to do, and while Inari was freaked out by it, he was assured they wouldn't go about eating people's brains like those zombie movies everyone was talking about. Inari understood, but still felt his stomach wouldn't be able to handle the sight of two people rising from the dead, and when asked why they couldn't do it for his father, Naruto told him that Kaisa had been dead for too long. With Zabuza and Haku they still had a chance to bring back from the dead, since they had been deceased for less than two months, while Kaiza had been dead much longer than the time needed to bring the man back to life. However, Naruto assured Inari that if there had still been time for Kaiza to be revived, that he would have been the first in being resurrected, just to make the boy's mother happy. Inari understood knowing that Naruto would always use his power to take away the pain of a person or family that didn't deserve such suffering. Yes Kamimuro-san, these are two shinobi that were the first outside of Kanoha that I had ever come to respect. You will stand watch with Inari while I perform the demonic ritual needed to revive them. I sense familiar chakra signatures have just entered wave country, and this will no doubt bring them here. Once I am done you are to take us back to Tazuna's house before we are spotted, said Naruto getting a nod from the albino, who walked over to Inari to tell him of the plan. I'll take over from here kid. You are still new to this whole thing, so it's best if I do this with you watching and learning on the side, said Kayubi, knowing that only through his experience could this work. As you wish, father, I trust your reasoning thought Naruto, bowing his head slightly, as his new father possessed his body. In the name of the demon king, all that is darkness and damnation, I call upon the two spirits of the underworld to hear me. I command both Mamachi Zabuza and Haku to come forth from the underworld to return to their bodies so they may live and rise once again. As the ruler of hell I command you to rise again. Demon secret art. Rise from the grave jutsu said Kaiubi after completing the hand signs, and slammed his hands into the ground, sending a blast of demonic chakra towards the two graves. Once the demonic chakra made contact with the graves the earth surrounding it rumbled, and shook violently beneath Naruto's feet. Soon two sets of hands shot out of the ground with the bodies attached rising, as they let out gasps for breaths, as well as letting out loud screams of pain from having their souls reattached to their bodies. Naruto or rather it was Kaiubi now possessing Naruto's body, who raised his hands and shot demonic chakra at them, making it look like they were being electrocuted by red lightning. Such power thought Kamimuro seeing the massive amount of chakra being launched at the two former corpses of the earth. Inari thought the same thing. Meanwhile in wave country, Hanada was nervous looking for her friend and crushed while walking amongst the populace of wave country when she saw the people looking at her with disdain in their eyes. It had made her feel unwelcome in her mind just like when she was back home while near some of the traditionalized Hyuga clan elders, and how they all thought she was weak. Geez they were fine with Naruto and Team 7 after they saved them all from Gato, but not us. No respect, said Anko crossing her arms, as she was disappointed in how these people were looking at her team. It's not Anko-sen. It's something else entirely different. 
My bugs tell me that they have found out about what was going to happen to Naruto, and don't feel like welcoming his potential executioners into their country, said Shino, sensing the anger from these people, and his bugs telling him to be careful. The point, said Anko, scowling a little because of Kanoha's biggest, and fools that had caused this and wanting the kid dead. The real question is where Naruto could be hiding, said Guy rubbing his finger against his chin in thought. Now let's try T Tazuna sends H house. T the man W was the C client that H hired Naruto Kun's T team, said Hinata blushing slightly at the thought of being right, and seeing her crush again. It would seem logical that Naruto would stay with someone he knows that will take him in without question, said Shino, who got a nod from the group, and headed out only to stop when they felt a surge of immense power coming to the east of their position. What the hell? said Enko, feeling the demonic presence behind the sheer volume of power being unleashed. Naruto-kun thought Hinata worriedly using her by Akigen to see the demonic power being generated was so massive, that even her father would quake in fear of such strength now within her sights. Let's go, said Guy, heading off with the others behind him. Weary, I'll leave you said Zabuza looking at Haku, and himself before looking at what appeared to be an exhausted Naruto standing before them. Save your strength Zabuza. You too Haku. I brought you both back from the depths of hell, and beyond, so that you may help me in my future endeavors, said Naruto panting heavily, sweating up a storm at all the chakra Kyubi used while possessing his body. Naruto-sama. I sense Shinobi are approaching. I sent Inari home feeling he might be used against you, said Kamimuro, knowing that Inari, while a brave young boy already, could be used as a bargaining chip for his master to surrender, and the albino would have none of that happening. Thanks Kamimuro. Take these two, and the sword to Tazuna's house. They must not be seen or else knowledge of their existence will be brought to both Kanoha and Mist. We can't allow that to happen, said Naruto, feeling his power slowly returning to him, and the breaths evening out at a slower pace. I cannot leave without you Naruto-sama, said Kamimuro, not wanting to abandon the young demon heir at a moment of danger. You will do, as I have asked of you Kamimuro. I need to cover the grave so they don't suspect a thing. Even in my weakened condition I can hold them off so do not worry, said Naruto, seeing Kamimuro reluctantly bow before he picked up the two bodies, and took off. Are you sure you can handle this? Said Kayubi looking at his son in the boy's now redesigned mindscape, that looked like the inside den area of a large house, complete with a fireplace, and everything. On a scale of 1 to 10. I give myself seven thought Naruto, as he proceeded to cover up the graves quickly to make it look like they were undisturbed. With the retrieval team, Hanada ran as fast as her legs would allow her to go with her being a close second behind Anko, who was trailing slightly behind Guy, and Shino was several feet back due to his large coat creating wind resistance. The Hayuga heiress hoped she would see Naruto soon, since all she wanted was to see her crush, even if it was just one more time if only that. She had seen the hatred the village unleashed upon him, and how they were cruel to him by not allowing him in stores, chasing him away from restaurants, and on his birthday of all days she never saw him since it was also the day of the Kayubi festival. Even if I can just see Naruto-kun one more time, that's all I need before he goes. I want to tell him how I feel so he knows that at least one person cared about him when no one else did thought Hinata, as she, and the team soon reached their destination with Naruto standing there looking past the two graves with his back to them. My bugs tell me he has changed, no not changed, but rather he has become something different altogether than the rest of us. That, and his mood has changed since we last saw him thought Shino frowning, as he stared at this new Naruto like the rest of the group did while slowly walking forward. Come to watch the scenery with me, said Naruto, turning his gaze to the shocked team not expecting him to sense them, since they had been so quiet. Tazuna's house, Tsunami sen I need your assistance with these two please, said Kamimuro, who gave Haku to the young woman, who placed the boy on a chair, and the albino placed Sabuza on the nearby sofa. I can't believe the kid revived these two. I hope he did the right thing, said Tazuna, as he watched the two with a careful, drunken eye, since he had past history with these two guys. Naruto-sama brought them back to life for a reason, and I trust his judgment. I hope you also understand why he cannot do that for the man named Kaiser, said Kamimuro since Inari had already been given the explanation. It's alright my pasty white friend. Kaiza is in heaven right now so it would be rude to pull him out of there, as it is, said Tazuna, knowing that Tsunami would understand since Inari, and he himself already did. Do you think Naruto Nai-san will make it back before saying goodbye? Said Inari, who was slightly worried that his hero and brother would fall due to his weakened state. I have seen and felt Naruto Sama's power before I was in his service. I can tell you now without fear of being wrong that my master will not fall no matter the odds now stacked against him, said Kamimuro, looking out at the window closest to him, before he went back to taking care of Sabuza. At the graves, you all seemed surprised that I sensed you. Your stealth itself was good, but you forgot to hide your chakra signatures, and while this is not your fault, I could hear Shino's bugs buzzing around in his body. You really should try to learn to keep those guys quiet, said Naruto, smirking, as he turned around to fully face them. Uzumaki Naruto. We were asked by the fifth Hokage herself to try and bring you back to Kanoha one last time. 
Comply with her wishes or you will be taken by force, said Anko, knowing that the kid would sooner resist, rather than simply okay take me to my execution. Naruto could see the hesitant look in Hinata's eyes when Anko mentioned the last part, and that made the demon fox prince curious as to why she was even chosen. He knew the girl was shy by nature no doubt due to the expectations set by her damned clan, and that sending her to possibly fight him, would be like sending a cow to the slaughterhouse if he was, as evil, as everyone made him out to be. Why should I comply with her wishes? So she can watch me be executed. To die for all the public to see. To simply end the pain of the villagers, and shinobi. When I had no say in mine. You know what I'm talking about right Anko-sen? I've seen the looks people give both civilians, and shinobi alike. How many people have assaulted you? Beat you to a bloody pulp. How many times did they starve you? How did you handle receiving outdated and rusty weapons that you paid for triple the price of the good stuff? I bet that trench coat of yours and a year's supply of dango you suffered through in some way with the questions I just asked you. So if you can look me straight in the face and tell me that you were treated nicely by the village after what happened to you with the sanin, then I will come back with you, said Naruto looking right in the eyes with his piercing purse, making Anko flinch at the impact they had and knew that Naruto knew that her life wasn't all joy and games either. The Hokage wanted us to tell you she had a plan to save you, but it will only work if you return, said Shino, since it was true that the woman did have some kind of plan, even if they didn't know what it was. Let me guess she'll either have me locked away for a few years before she can request an audience with the fire daimyo to hear my case or seal off my chakra permanently to appeal to the masses, thinking the demon is vulnerable to attacks, thus making me a bigger target than ever. I'll pass on both since I know she'll fail to amuse the council with the idea. They know that Jureya could undo any sealing done to me, and that the fire daimyo will punish them if he gets his audience with the old hag concerning me, since he favored the third and fourth Hokage. The council tried so hard to gain some form of influence over him, with the advisors they sent over to try and gain his favor with suggestions that he didn't like. Fortunately, the man has a good heart and can see past prejudice and hate unlike most of the assholes in Konoha, so I don't have to worry about the council trying to use him to make me become labeled as a fire country white menace, said Naruto now smiling a fang smile, making Guy and Shino shiver in fear while Anko was close to it. The only one not shivering was Hinata because by some act of Kami or her own power, she wasn't sure, she found herself moving towards Naruto, walking slow careful steps, as if the last one would make her trip and fall on her face. Hinata what are you doing? said Anko seeing Hinata walking toward him without any weapon in hand or chakra in her hands for a gentle fist strike. That's what I'd like to know thought Naruto turning his gaze right to Hinata, who had somehow managed to get within arm's distance of him, yet made no move in the form of attacking or anything like that. Hinata herself didn't know why she was doing this, as she just felt that she had to move closer to him to look him in the eyes and tell him how she felt before she possibly lost him forever. She wanted her hands to touch his whisker marks, to look into his once blue now red slitted eyes, tell him without wavering that she cared about him, and to plead with him to come back to Kanoha so they could be together. She would have her father use all his political strength to save the boy somehow, Hanada knew the Hyuga clan's power held much sway in the ways of the political arena, and, as a plus her father had no grievances with Naruto whatsoever. See me now, as I see Naruto Kan thought Hinata, as she slowly stared up at him, looked into his eyes, showing all the love she had for him that they could create, in the hopes he would know that no matter, that she cared, and would stay with him to the end. Stupid girl. Kurenai is going to kill me thought Anko, knowing that if she tried to throw anything she might hit Hinata, and then she would be in a world of trouble. Naruto Kan please don't leave us. The other rookies need you now, Sanadi Sama sent us because she needs you, and I need you, as well. You mean everything to me Naruto-kun, you are my strength, my courage, and my very inspiration to improve myself. If you leave now it would be as if you died, and I don't think my heart could take it, said Hinata, moving even closer to him, and placing a hand on his whisker cheek. There's no lie in her words. She really does care. Thought Naruto finding the touch of her hand soothing, and the smell of lavenders that came off of her consuming his sense of smell. Please come back to Naruto-kun. My father can protect you from the council if you come back. I know he could since you have done so much for me, Aniji. When I get stronger I want you to be there to see it, and tell me how proud you are of me with my progress to get stronger, said Hinata looking at the boy, who seemed to be lost in thought. Hinata your words are sincere, as you are sweet. However, despite your good intentions I cannot go back not simply because I am a shinobi, who ran away from Konoha, but due to the fact that I will be killed when news reaches everyone that I am now truly a demon. The son of Kayubi to be more precise, said Naruto looking at Hinata's pained eyes, and stroking her cheek affectionately before breathing in her scent, while trying to remember every second of it. I don't care if you're a demon now. I just want to be with you Naruto-kun because I love you. I need you because I love you with all my heart, said Hinata looking up at the boy, who seemed surprised by this declaration, since he never really felt love in his life up until now. Naruto we can't stay here forever. Kamimura will get worried eventually, and look for us, making him noticeable to Konoha, as well as the world. 
Tell the shy Hayuga that you will one day return to see her, but not for several years, said Kayubi, knowing that it would have to do since it was what he could do to stop this girl's heart from shattering. Hanada I'll always be with you, but where I go you cannot follow, and even if you tried I don't want you to for I promise you that I will return to see you, said Naruto kissing her forehead, making Hinata's face turn redder than a chariot picking time. You mean it, said Hinata her voice now whispered due to the impact of her crush kissing her on her forehead. Her lips would have been better, but Hinata wasn't about to complain. Of course. Once a demon lord makes a promise he is honor bound to keep, but don't tell anyone that or else we'll both get into a lot of trouble, said Naruto in a tiny whisper of his own, since they did have an audience with him. When will I see you again? said Hinata, taking several steps back, not noticing that the people behind her were now telling to move away to get a clear shot. I'll be wandering around in three years after my training in demon world to do my own thing, so I can make a good name for myself. Good strong Hinata I'll be waiting for you, said Naruto winking at her before he was consumed in flame, and vanished leaving only ash behind from the grass beneath his feet. Damn it. Hinata you do know that we have to report this right. Hinata. Said Anko, now looking at the girl whose face was glowing so much that everyone around her thought she was radioactive. Naruto can kiss me, said Hinata in a whisper before collapsing under a faint spell with steam coming out of her ears. Okay I think we can all agree to take this last part out of our report. Last thing her clan needs to hear is their heirs fooling for demon royalty, said Anko getting a nod from the other two, since it wouldn't look good in the eyes of the clan elders, and some of the main family. Dazuna's house. I'm afraid the time has come for us to go, said Naruto, right after he appeared in a swirl of flame, shocking everyone in the room, since no one knew he could do that. Naruto Naisen, said Inari, rushing to his big brother, and giving him a hug. What do you mean you have to go to Naruto? Tsunami said, showing worry on her face. Yeah. You just got here. Come one, and stay a while, have a drink, marry my daughter, said Tazuna in a drunken state only slapped in the back of his head by Tsunami. I wish I could, but I'm afraid I can't. Shinobi are after me, and I can't have them find out I'm here with all of you. Kamimuro, once they are more awake, and able to move, I need you to tell them about the plan. Tell them of their purpose in returning from the grave, and tell them that while you three are spying for me that they are to get stronger, as well. They will not be relying on their water jutsus or bloodlines, but trying to use other things so they don't become recognizable to anyone. Only use those styles, as a last resort, since no one will expect those types of skills to exist after so long. Understand. Said Naruto, as he looked at his albino warrior. Of course Naruto-sama, said Kamimuro, knowing where his master was going. As for the rest of you. Inari my brother, Tsunami the mother I always wanted, and Yutazuna are the drunken yet comical grandfather, who stands up for what is right. I hope to make you proud beyond all your expectations, said Naruto, meaning every word he spoke before he disappeared in a burst of flame. At the Great Uzumaki Naruto Bridge, ready to go my boy, said Kayubi grinning at finally being able to go home with his newly declared son. Yeah. Hey Kayubi, can I ask you something? Thought Naruto went through hand signs to open the portal to the demonic realm. Fire away, said Kayubi, curious about his son's question. What do you think of Hinata? Thought Naruto wondering what his father would say about the Hayuga heirs. The shy one that smells of lavenders. Whom her heart is in the right place, she holds no hatred for you, and she doesn't care that you are now my son. Hell the shy one even declared her love for you in front of that retrieval team, so I say that the Hayuga would make a fine mate for you, said Kayubi chuckling at his son's blush at calling Hinata his mate. I never said that Hinata would be my mate, but now that you brought it up, did you know that I would take her as my mate? How would that even work? Since I'm your son doesn't that make me longer in terms of a lifespan? Thought Naruto frowning a little at his father mentally while nearly doing the hand signs. So young, and so naive you are about life with the threat of father time looming in the shadows, threatening to take it away. There are ways around this dilemma if you do choose the shy Hayuga, as your mate once you literally mate with her. Every time we male demons decide to mate with a female human, we mark our mates by biting their neck with our teeth. Once our fangs penetrate the skin they slowly release demonized energy into her system that will change the physical makeup of her body to that of a demon, as well. This also happens in order for the female to handle the power of the child that is growing inside of her, so that the child or children born will not kill the mother during pregnancy, said Kayubi smiling at his son's fish-like expression. As educational as that bit of information was I did not expect you to go into exact detail in terms of mating thought Naruto, though he imagined what Hinata would look like, as a fox demon, and when he did he felt blood running out of his nose. That's my boy, said Kayubi, chuckling at his son's eyes, having that glazed over look from seeing the image, and knowing this girl was the one for him. It's time. Demonic art. Demon world portal jutsu. Said Naruto, his hands glowing red before thrusting them forward, and creating a circle that would be the portal to take him to the demon world. Naruto-kun, please wait. Yelled Hinata calling out to him having awakened from her faint spell before searching for him with her Byakugan finding him on the bridge ready to enter another world, and temporarily away from her life. Hinata-chan. Said Naruto, surprised that she found him so fast, and wondered where her team was, and if she was being used as a distraction. 
I just wanted to return the kiss you gave me, said Hinata, and kissed Naruto right on the lips, showing him even further that what she said was true. I like this girl already. What a fox she will make for my son. A graceful queen for my son, and future king of demons, said Kayubi to himself knowing that if this played out, as he hoped it would, then the fox would one day become a grandfather. That's some return Hinata-chan. Wow. Said Naruto, now grinning a large fox-like grin at Hinata, who simply blushed a new shade of red. Don't forget about me, okay Naruto-kun, said Hinata, knowing she should have more faith in her love, than to remind him already of her when he hasn't even left her side or plane of existence yet. I'll never forget you, Hinata-chan, my lavender fox Haim, said Naruto, seeing the girl blush even further, though he said those things he didn't understand, but suspected it was his demon blood influencing him in that regard. With that Naruto entered the portal leaving Hinata, and all he knew was never to see them again for the next three years. Hinata put her hands to her chest, and knew that one day he would return to her, and when he did, she would show just how strong she had become. She was so deep in her little world that Hinata failed to notice her team was behind her a few feet, and had seen a brief moment of the kiss she gave to the demon prince. No dango tonight for me thought Anko was wondering how she was going to explain this to the Hokage. Demon World Kyubi's Den, Naruto looked around at his surroundings, and saw that the sky was reddish purple with white clouds, the trees looked like trees, though some looked a little unhealthy, and the cave behind him was huge in itself. It was bigger than his father's cell in his mind, and that was big enough to create an eyesore from seeing it too many times in his mind. It was an even bigger pain seeing the Kyubi behind it, as Naruto wanted his father free from the prison, but couldn't since such attempts of freedom would kill both father and son. Has anyone been here since you've been with me? Thought Naruto walking towards the den only to feel a powerful barrier pushing him back slowly. No. What you felt just now was my demonic barrier I set up when I'm away from my cave, which I fortunately was at the time before I attacked Kanoha. Since you are now my son it won't hurt you, but anyone else, and it would have turned them into liquid goo. You me goodness, said Kayubi laughing at the thought, as Naruto made a yuck face, thinking it was more along the lines of nasty than Yumi. So you finally made it here. I was beginning to think someone had killed you before you arrived, said someone behind Naruto, who turned to see a draconic man with black and spiky hair with a white patch in the middle. Who the hell are you? Said Naruto, looking at the man right in the eyes, which he noticed were red, but with a smooth naturalness to them. He wore black baggy pants, blue ninja top, and black cloak with the kanji for devil on the back with the kanji in a circle of red flames. He had black boots, wrist, as well as his ankles, and chakra weights were black with a strange blue trim on one side of the tips. My apologies Naruto-sama, my name is Shiro Yamato, and I am known here in Demon World, as the Shadow Knight, said Shiro, giving a curt bow. How do you know about me? Said Naruto, getting into a defensive stance while Shiro just remained standing. Your father, Kayubi sent a demon fox summons to me to have me await your arrival here in Demon World after all that has happened to you in Kanoha. As for my connection with Kayubi, it was through my father, who was a good friend of your fox father, and a powerful demon dragon named Ryan. According to the message I received from Kayubi, he wishes that such friendship between two great demons be passed down to us, and, as their children show that their blood lives in us, said Shiro walking towards Naruto, who lowered his guard somewhat, and finally seized the various draconian features he possessed, but saw that he was strangely still half-human. The boy will help you get stronger here in this world when you aren't learning it from me or what I have in my den. Also I can see you are wondering about him being a half-demon, so I'll tell you why. Unlike with most demons, dragons, as well as a few other demons, can release demon chakra from their fangs, and thus when mating with a human female, simply get a half-demon child like Shiro. My guess is that his mother died bringing him into this world, as all human females do when bringing a child into the world, said Kayubi, glad to see the son of his old friend, wanted to continue the pact of friendship. Thanks for doing this Shiro-sen. I know you could have turned it down so I can say that you have earned my respect, said Naruto walking up the half-demon, and shook his hand. I like you already too. You're not arrogant because of your new status, as the Kyubi's father, and I can see you want to work hard for your strength from the feel of your skin. Your hand may heal from wounds, but the scales and inner workings of my nerves tell me that you've had your fair share of working your hands to the bone. Very few people these days work that hard to get what they want, since they have it handed to them like they were special, said Shiro seeing Naruto's slightly surprised face at that little tidbit of info. You have to forgive me since I never suspected you traveled from demon world, and back, said Naruto, looking at the half-dragon half-man carefully in case the boy tried to retaliate physically. To Naruto's surprise, Shiro simply let out a hearty laugh. Believe it or not I've been to the human world before, and I've seen the arrogance those humans have for the power they think they can understand. They simply take power from others, rather than earning it with the blood, sweat, and tears others shed to gain it in order to grow stronger. Because of that they use that stolen power to make everything that they touch become nothingness, and quite frankly I myself couldn't stand it anymore, so I went to demon world to further embrace my own heritage. I'm just glad my father fell in love with a human that had a good heart, an open mind about people whatever the race or species they may be. 
said Shiro, as he was now grinning a dragon smile with his scales around his chin rippling a little, as he did. Well since you're here you want to get started, said Naruto knowing they could begin training right away. Sure. Why not? I've been waiting here a while so I could use a good workout to awaken these stiff dragon muscles of mine, said Shiro laughing slightly since the muscles in his body hardly ever became stiff. If you don't count the thing between his legs when he sees a hot naked woman. Before you start your training son I thought you should know that inside your new home is a sword of mine that has been passed down from one fox demon to another. It is your birthright to wield it as my heir to my throne. Also I want to take your existing shinobi attire and make slight modifications to it so everyone here and in human world when you return in 3 years knows just whose son you are, said Kayubi smiling as he had the perfect ideas to add to his son's combat attire to further strengthen him. The stay just keeps on getting even better thought Naruto, as he got into a fighting stance while Shiro got into his, and the two went at it. Kanoha Hokage Tower three days later, so the mission was a failure yet again, said Sanadi, getting a confirmed nod from Anko and Guy, while their two genin left the room. Yeah. Naruto was really pissed that you wanted him to come back to Kanoha knowing what awaited him here. Even with whatever you had planned, he basically figured it out, and wanted nothing to do with any of us. Or at least most of us anyway, said Anko, knowing that there was one person that Naruto would return for if only to take her with him. It was so youthful. Naruto was standing over two graves, and when we confronted him he mocked us so harshly, said Guy crying and I'm tears making the two women sweat drop, and they suspected that if Rock Lee were in the room, the two weirdos would probably be involved in a long hugging scene right about now. How they hated that. He was obviously paying his respects to the two shinobi there. I've read that report done by Kakashi concerning those two in question, and I think Naruto could relate to the two easily. What else happened? Said Sanadi looking at the two sensing something else had happened in Wave Country. Other than the fact that the people there looked at us like they wanted to gut the team up like fish. Not much, said Anko, hoping the Hokage wouldn't suspect anything, and let them go. Well if that's everything then you are, said Sanadi, but was interrupted by several of the council members who came into the room not looking pleased. We have to have a little talk with you Hokage-sama, said Danzo, not looking pleased, as he held a sheet of paper in his hands with a scowl on his face, meaning he didn't like what he was reading. I'm in the middle of a mission report with several of my shinobi Danzo and council, so you will just have to wait your turn like everyone else does, said Sanadi smirking at them, since they clearly didn't like being treated like everyone else, as they believed that they were above everyone else including her. I guess we have to stay here for a few more minutes right? said Anko, wishing she was torturing someone right now. Yes. I know why the council is in an uproar. They tried to use their power to take claim over the Namika's household to get access to the estate and all that it holds within it due to it being under a lockdown jutsu. Only someone who is a blood relative or descendant of the Namika's line to be more precise can unlock it and claim the spoils the Yandame had placed in there. So in a move that surprised even me, I put the home, the deed, and all that is the Namika's line under Naruto's name. This way the council couldn't try to take it under the law that all airless clan homes become state property, and then placed under the care of the government officials, said Sanadi, knowing that Danzo wanted what was inside the home, so he could gain more power to throw her out of power. Yash. Your flames of youth shine brightly Hokage-sama, and when Naruto returns he'll not only gain a passionate girlfriend in Hinata, but his inheritance too, said Guy, making Enko slap her head at the Jounin's words. Amigai thought Enko, knowing that now she had to tell Sanadi or risk a pay cut this month. What? Did you just say gain a passionate girlfriend in Hinata? Spill. Said Sanadi before scowling at the two shinobi in front of her. Okay Hokage-sama this is the unedited version, but it's also the unofficial version, so what we told you originally, has to stay, as it was stated, said Anko, knowing that the less people who knew about this the better. What happened? Said Sanadi, her patience getting thinner, and her body aging a little bit faster than she would have hoped. In a nutshell. Hinata was the cause of the mission failing, said Anko, as she and Guy told Sanadi all about the whole event that happened at the two graves, the kiss Naruto gave Hinata on her forehead, her fainting, their brief reunion on the bridge, and finally the kiss Hinata gave Naruto at the last moment before leaving the human world for an unknown amount of time. So the little moron finally saw it, huh? Well I guess I'm not surprised since the treatment from the village didn't help much, so it's not all his fault. Now get out of here before the council comes barging in again, but while you're out I need you two to find Jureya so he and I can talk more about this, said Sanadi letting out a tired sigh before looking at the pictures of the previous Hokages on the wall behind her, wondering what they thought of Kanoha right now. Kanoha Hospital, Niji awoke to see his cousin Hinata there to see him awake, and was happy to see him now fully conscious after all that happened to him during the failed retrieval mission for Uchiha Sasuke. Originally he didn't know the mission was a failure since he had been unconscious the whole time, and no one told him yet about the results of it all. However, deep in Niji's heart, he felt something had happened, and knew that whatever it may be was for the worst. Hanada-sama I'm glad you came to visit me, said Niji smiling at his cousin, and wishing he had not been such an ass to her early on in life. You're welcome Niji Naisen. 
I hope you recover fast, as I want your help in my own style of gentle fist, said Hinata without stuttering, making Niji's eyebrow go up at her sudden act of confidence and determination. Hinata-sama forgive me for asking, but did you by some chance have some kind of interaction with Uzumaki Naruto? Said Niji hoping that if such a thing was the case it better not have been anything perverted. Judging by the signs of Hinata blushing, and trying to force it down, meant the two's little interaction wasn't perverted, but the Hyuga prodigy didn't want to be an uncle just yet. Correct Niji Nai-san, but it happened at a really bad time, said Hinata, who kept her blush down, since it was so important that she tell Niji what happened to Naruto. The loud what? Soon echoed throughout Kanoha nearly scaring some people right out of their clothes. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.